Hey everybody, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com here in San Diego. If you're looking for service on your Vespa, you've come to the right place. This is my workshop here in San Diego, California. I have a longtime Mexico friend scooter right here. His, name, his nickname is Cupcake. He uh, sent me a message earlier right in the middle of doing damn videos. I got a lot of videos to do tonight, but uh, he says scooters make a little squeal noise. So let's check it out. It's just a little imprompt video. I always like little imprompt repair. So let's see what this thing sounds like. Holy shit, this thing's like a jalopy. Oh, I don't even think I could roll it. <laughs> he rode this thing over here. I think I know what's going on with this thing. I'm actually afraid to start it because... Oh, it's like, a, it's like an automatic car. See how this crease forward? And you hear that little squeal like a jalopy. So I think I know what's going on with this scooter. It's not a common problem, but I have seen this problem occur with um, pretty much the whole range of Vespas, everything from the 150s, 250s, and 300s. Every once in a while, you'll end up with this problem that causes the rear tire to feel like it's completely locked up, and then the scooter will make a horrible squeal noise and want to move forward. So let's get the belt cover apart. And I'll show you what's going on with it. All right. That bearing doesn't sound so good, but I don't think that's the issue. You see the issue right there? The clutch nut is has backed out a couple of turns and is what it does is it rubs and when you get contact there that's why there's tons of friction now look at the tire turns turns without issues so all we're going to do is take this apart you could just cheat it and turn the nut and tighten it right there but we're going to um torque that nut back down put some loctite on it and then there won't be any issues i'll pop a new uh bearing in as well. So. Again, to take it all apart, it's nice and easy when you have uh, tools, power tools to do it. But when assembling, I always use the factory tools to kind of hold all the, the pulleys. I'm not sure if he's at the service inter in interval. The belt looks okay. It's not falling apart like uh, my BB350, if you saw that video where the belt was uh, coming apart. So here's the clutch assembly. See how that's all rocking. You know what? It might need a new clutch. I'm gonna do this uh, caveman style. I'm gonna take it apart with my own bare hands. Let's see how this thing looks. Don't try this at home, it might blow up in your face. There we go. The spring. Let's see how that feels on there. And you know, it's not too bad. It's a little knackered up, but I think it's. Maybe we'll put a new nut on there. That thing's pretty uh, hammered. So make sure that threads all the way down. I think we'll be fine. From the factory, they never put Loctite on these. And I've seen them, they, they come loose every once in a while. And that's kind of the symptom where it drags forward. Sounds like a squealing jalopy. These bearings still feel good, no problems there. And I think I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna clean this out and uh, put it back together and ship it. All right, so put some Loctite on these threads here. If there's any left in this, um, this well-used bottle here. And I don't recommend this at home. There's the factory tool that we will use to torque the nut, but I like kind of ruining my hand sometimes, so. Put the nut on the other direction. So you can only with these, these clutches, you could do this. 
you know, with the, uh, the, the big 500s, there's no way you're doing this because unless you're like E-Man or something. I'll show you what my hand looks like after I do something like this. Look at my hands there. See, that's the fins embossed into my hands. All right, now we can get this torque. And just as a precautionary measure, you could always put a small amount of Loctite on the very air threads. Not really necessary. These never seem to come, come off in my experience. If everything's all torched correctly and these washers are in good shape, no problems. All right, torqued variator. That's the factory tool that holds the variator. It does have an extra plate that normally you can bolt on, but Definitely never is needed. 80 foot pounds. And you see I'm using an old fashioned torque wrench. These are actually, they never need to be recalibrated. And here's how you recalibrate it. You just bend the needle. You just zero it back out. The old school torque wrench. That's still good. And we're gonna go ahead and change that bearing out real quickly. Do it the quick and dirty way with uh, a socket. Let's take the circlip out. Look at this funny little wrench I got. Flip the bell cover over. And knock the bearing out. With anything, doesn't matter. We don't care if we're gonna destroy it. Take a socket that's uh, the outer diameter of the bearing. You never want to punch a new bearing in from the center. And the nice thing is the belt cover is still nice and warm because the scooter was just used. There you go. Here the tone change means the bearing's all the way seated. Get the circlip back in. And don't forget, got to put the clutch bell on. It destroys a clutch if you don't. So there you have it, the squeal of death has been fixed. And I can tell you one thing, I'm hungry for a California burrito right here. And let's see what else. Maybe uh, some uh, cerveza indio. All right, let's see what happens. Whew. Until next time here, robot. Vespa Motorsport, Scooter West. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Vespa Motorsport. Follow our YouTube channel, Vespa Motorsport.